Well, good morning, everyone, and a happy Isaias Hurricane Sunday. <laughs> I hope you're all safe inside out of the blowing winds and the falling rains. Got your bacon and eggs cooking and having your pancakes. So uh, I'm glad you tuned in this morning, and it's my pleasure and delight to bring us the Word of God today. It's going to be a little bit laid back, but that's all right. So, uh, yeah. Uh, I do trust you are safe and that you're keeping your spirit man alive and in the word that you're seeking the face of the of the living God. I want to, uh, if you would, you can open your Bibles to the book of Matthew chapter 14, Matthew chapter 14. I'm going to be reading 25 through 29 and uh, also, I just want to make everyone aware, if you would like to give this morning, you can feel free to do that. There should be a slide coming up here shortly, explaining the different ways that you can give. And as I always say, and, and particularly in this crazy year, I am so grateful for everyone's faithful giving. Uh, you all are doing fantastic, and I just love and appreciate your faithfulness to God and to His, to His Word. Okay, so Matthew chapter 14 says, verse 25, about three o'clock in the morning, I think that's when the winds are supposed to start blowing, about three o'clock in the morning, Jesus came toward them walking on the water, and when the disciples saw him walking on the water, they were terrified, and in their fear, they cried out, it's a ghost, but Jesus spoke to them at once saying, don't be afraid, take courage, I am here. Then Peter called out to him, Lord, if it's really you, tell me to come to you walking on the water. Yes, come, Jesus said. So Peter went over the side of the boat and walked on the water towards Jesus. Holy Spirit, I ask for your help this morning. Uh, in sharing, delivering this word. And Father, may our hearts be open wide to receive everything that you have ordained for us to walk in uh, from your word. We love you and we'll always love you. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, uh, I've been into this series uh, talking about the uh, faith, about the life of God. Last week, we specifically talked about making a divine connection with God so that we can access His divine life. And so the whole sermon was about uh, that connection, and a lot of time was spent on faith. Well, one of the things I want to accomplish today is I want to I want to zero in on what exactly it is when we talk about eternal life or the life of God because that's really what I want us going after as a church and as a people of God. If you can get the life of God flowing in your life, you can accomplish just about anything. You can accomplish anything that comes up before you. So uh, a couple of weeks ago, my wife and I uh, celebrated our 38th anniversary. Hallelujah! That was a good one. Uh, but one of the things I really like about my wife, love about her actually, is her adventurous spirit and her competitiveness. And for as long as I've known her, she's been very adventurous and very uh, competitive. And most people that meet her will eventually make the same kind uh, of statement as well. But uh, one of the things I can specifically remember when we were dating, when I first saw this um, beautiful part of who she is come out, uh, I was sitting with her uh, watching uh, at the night in the dormitory that she worked in, and a guy happened to stop by, another student, and he had this big old tarantula about like that. And he reached into the cage, pulled the tarantula out, and put it on my hand. And the tarantula just sat there on my on my hand. Well, you know, Kelly couldn't stand to be outdone, so she said, I, you know, I, uh, if he can do that, so can I. So she held her hand out, and the guy picked up the spider and set it in her hand. But this time, when he set it in her hand, the spider started doing one of these little numbers. I don't know if you can see my fingers. But this slow, tarantula-like action, and it started crawling up her arm, to which she finally uh, gave in and said, you can take it now. But that's who Kelly is. You know, if he can do it, so can I. So she's always been very adventurous and very competitive. And when I think about the passage of Scripture that we just read in Matthew 14, when uh, Jesus says to Peter, uh, come, uh, Peter jumps out of the boat. And 
somewhere along the line, he had to have thought this, uh, this thought as he looked out there, saw Jesus walking on the water, that uh, something popped into his head. If he can do it, so can I. Uh, you know, so God's looking for people like that. God's looking for people to do amazing things. They read something in the Word, they hear uh, something that Jesus did, and they say to themselves, if He can do that, then so can I. Those are the kind of people that God is looking for. But in order to do that, we have to access the God kind of life. And so, uh, if you're following along in the notes, by the way, you can get there, uh, our website, www.houseoffreedom.org. Click on media and you'll find notes, video, and other sorts of things going on there. But number one is connecting to the good life. If you're going to release the life of God uh, uh, through your life, then you're going to have to make that connection. When we talk about the new birth, or Jesus uh, saying to Nicodemus, you must be born again. What what's we're referring to and speaking about there is making a connection with God in such a way that we access His life. And His life then flows into us and causes us to be spiritually made alive. Uh, the Apostle Paul called this in 2 Corinthians 5.17. He says it makes us to be a new creature or a new creation in Christ. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has passed away, and behold, the new has come. And we give a lot of uh, focus in, in the body of Christ at large on being born again or experiencing the new birth. But a lot of that focus and attention is given uh, to get people, let's see, I'll use these words, outfitted so that they can go to heaven. But this word zoe, which is eternal life, it's what happens when we get born again. It's a lot, lot more than just your insurance to get into heaven. I don't mean to belittle that or to make any, any lightness of that because it's critically important. We want everybody to go to heaven. But God wants us to begin to experience the fullness of, of what that word life actually means. But in order to experience the fullness of that life, we have to make a connection to it. So, for example, in John chapter 15, uh, Jesus says that He is the vine and we are the branches. And He prunes the branches so that they are more fruitful. But what I want us to see is that if the branch is separated from the vine, it dies. But as long as the branch stays connected, the life that is in the vine goes into, it flows into uh, that branch. So the connection is important for all of us in order to receive the God life. So zoe is the word for life that's used so often in the New Testament, particularly the Gospels. Jesus said, I have come that uh, you might have life and that you would have it abundantly. The word that he uses there is zoe. I've come that you might have zoe. This, this life is a life that is so full of vitality. It's like everything it touches comes alive. Everything it touches is made right. And when we get born again, the life of God flows into us. So the zoe literally flows into us, touches our dead spirit, and suddenly we are made alive. We're made a new creature, a new creation in Christ Jesus. So that's why Jesus says in John 10.10, 10, My purpose is that you would have zoe and that you would have it abundantly. So that's the new birth. That's the born again experience. Folks, that is an absolute incredible miracle that takes place. That when you get born again and you become a new creation, something immediately begins to happen uh, in you as an individual. It's like all of the darkness that you once lived in or walked in, you begin to push against that. You don't, you don't want those things in your life. You want the life of God flowing. Jesus in, uh, or Mark, John in his book, The Gospel, 1-4, said, In him, Jesus, was life, and that life was the light of men. So when the life of God flows into us, because we make the connection by faith, the life of God flows into us, the light comes out, and it pushes against the darkness. It drives it back. The darkness absolutely cannot stand. It's powerless before the light. Therefore, everything that had been dark in our 
own lives, we're suddenly seeking God so that the light of his life would fill us and drive out every ounce of darkness. Here's another good thought about this uh, God life. Uh, Psalm chapter 8 and verse 5 the psalmist writes these words that we were made just a little bit lower than God. Now, I want you to ponder that for a moment. When God made us, He made us just, just a shade, just a, a wee teeny little bit uh, lower than Himself. I find that to be really amazing, that God would make you and I to be that kind of individual or that kind of... Uh, of person, that we would be so like God that we would experience His glory, we would experience His life. And that's what man had in, in the beginning with God in the garden. But when He fell, we experienced spiritual death. Jesus comes so that we could have life. And when that life enters into us, we become that new creature, that new creation in Christ Jesus we go right back up to that status of that Psalm 8 and 5, just a little bit lower than God. I think that's a great place to dwell as a believer, uh, as, as a Christian in this life. So the new life that comes into us is the God life. So the, the first point we're talking about is making a connection with the God life. The new life that comes to us is the God life. When we're born again... We get connected to God, and the God life flows into us. Now, Kelly and I were uh, traveling this week, did a ministry trip uh, up to North Carolina, so a lot of time on the road. But she works from home now. She works for Health First. And in order for her to go on this trip, she had to be able to uh, be connected. So she had to be able to have her computer connected, her phone connected. So... All through this trip, if there's one word that I heard quite often, it was this word, uh, connect. Uh, it came out like this, I can't get connected. Uh, I'm having trouble with my connection. And then we would start passing through the mountains, and your connection comes and goes, and I would start to hear once again, I keep losing my connection. So for her, it was a critical two days because she had to stay connected in order to do uh, her work, in order to do her job. So I want to ask this question. Is the connection important? Well, the answer, I'll, I'll give it to you, it's a resounding yes. The connection is extremely important. But here's what I want you to understand, church. Because there's a lot of focus that's put on the connection, and it's a critical connection. You have to have it in order to access the life. But the connection is not the life. It's only access to the life. And so a lot of the body of Christ stays excited and focused on the connection, and not so much on the life that you have access to once you are connected. So the connection's important, but what it accesses is way more important. So by faith, we're connected to the vine. And by faith, we experience the new birth. And by faith, we become new creations in Christ. So faith connects us to the Zoe, the God life. The connection is about accessing the God life. Again, I want to encourage you, church, that you would begin to, with your eyes of faith, look beyond faith itself and begin to explore the grand horizon of all that you have in the God life. This thing that Jesus said he wanted us to have and to have it uh, abundantly. Now, the other word I heard my wife say quite often on our journey this week was the word access. Uh, she's meeting with her teams in these uh, Zoom meetings, whatever streams, there, whatever it is they use. But she's leading her team, and often I would hear the words, you don't have access to that, or I don't have access to that. Okay, they were all connected. Uh, they were experiencing connection. They were talking, but at different times, the things they were trying to get to, they did not have access to it. So when we talk about the God life, Number one, it's important that we are connected to God and we experience the new birth and that we are made alive. 
Zoe. We're made alive in Christ. We got to have that connection. But I want to focus on accessing the God life. So we access the God life through this connection called faith. So in John 3.16, a scripture most everybody knows, uh, God loved the world so much that he gave his one and only son that whoever would believe in him would not perish but have everlasting life. Again, that word there, everlasting life, is zoe. You believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you receive the God life. Now, John 3.16 calls it eternal life, and yes, it does get us into heaven, but the Word is so much more than just a pathway into heaven. It includes divine health. It includes uh, provision. It includes peace of heart. It includes security. All of these things we find in the Word of God, but it stems from the life of God that is in us, and flows to us uh, from, from, his, from His throne. Now, as I read comments and heard people speak about last Sunday's message, uh, I kind of came away from the feeling that the greatest takeaway from last Sunday was about faith. I talked about uh, tandem skydiving, uh, where you, you don't have a parachute, yet you're jumping out of a plane. Uh, but you are tied to a guy behind you who does have a parachute. And so I called that little connection, that, that little harness between myself and the guy behind me, I called that faith because it gave me access to his parachute. So a lot of people were excited uh, about that. Uh, and I'm glad. Uh, you know, I want your faith growing. I don't want you to be discouraged about this. But here's what I want you to really begin to look at. What... What more do I get beyond the parachute? There, there is so much that is given to us in the God life, and I think so often we put our focus uh, on one specific little thing somewhere, and we miss a lot of what God has designed for us to, to walk in. So I want you to get hungry for uh, connecting to this God life so that you can experience the God kind of life in, in your life. So the connection's important, the faith connection's important, but it's not the life. Faith is important, but faith is not Zoe. It just gives us access to the Zoe, and that's what I want to get more excited about myself. So the life is in the vine. We learned that John 15, when Jesus said, I'm the vine, you're the branches. In other words, Jesus was saying, that he was filled with the God life. Now, listen to this passage, John chapter 5 and verse 26. The Father has life in himself. The Father has Zoe in himself. Then this passage goes on to say this, and he has granted that same life-giving power to his Son, or he has granted that same life, that same Zoe to his Son. So, God the Father is life. He is eternal life. He's got it. And He gave to His Son this same uh, Zoe life this, that caused Him to be so alive. Now, if I am in Him, Jesus, and He is in me, then I'm in His life, in His Zoe, I'm in His Zoe, and His Zoe is in me as well. Therefore, when we look at the Word, I'm kind of all over the place, but just kind of dance with me here. When we look at the Word and we uh, observe the life of Jesus, here's what we see. We see God in Christ calming storms. Read about that in the gospel where uh, Jesus went walking on the water. Or Jesus was in the bow of the boat asleep in the midst of the storm. That uh, he slept through the storm. He wasn't worried about it. But when the disciples woke him up, he got up and he spoke to the, the storm. And the wind and the waves died down. Just like we are speaking right now to Isaias saying, winds die. In Jesus' name, we command wind shear to cut the fire out of that thing so it dies out over the, over the Atlantic. 
So we speak the Word. So in the Word, we see God, God life, in Jesus. And when Jesus confronts a storm, the storm dies down. In the Word, we see God, the God life, in Christ, and it enables Him to walk on the water. In the Word, we see God in Christ multiplying bread and fish, healing the sick, opening blind eyes, opening deaf ears, and, and causing the dead to come alive again. Now, if we can see the God life in Christ doing these sort of things, my hope is, is that we would be like Peter and we'd have this crazy thought as we look at Jesus doing this. If he can do that, so can I. If he can do that, so can I. That's what I want to tell you, church. If Jesus can do these things, you by faith can access the God life and do these things as well. How do I know that? Well, let's read another scripture. 1 John chapter 5 and verse 11. And this is what God has testified. So this is what God is speaking. It's what he's saying. He has given us eternal life. So God has given us eternal life, and this life is in his Son. So we have eternal life, and it's the same life that's in his Son. Whoever has the Son, that's you and I because we believe, has life, has zoe. These are all zoes here. He has given us eternal zoe. This zoe is in his Son. Whoever has the Son has zoe. Whoever does not have God's Son does not have any life. Therefore, you remain spiritually dead. So, God is filled with zoe. God gave his Son, zoe. We believe on the Lord Jesus Christ by faith. We make the divine connection, and the Zoe comes rushing into us. Therefore, we have Zoe. We have life. That's what makes life supernatural. Again, just going back to the born-again born experience. When I got born again, it was such a radical change in my heart and my life that I couldn't go back to what I was prior to that event, prior to receiving Christ. Everything within me uh, in that moment, having been born again, was saying, you know, so long to the old life, goodbye to that life. Everything within me compelled me to go deeper with Christ and to go after Him with everything that I have. Folks, that's supernatural. You know, uh, people still say, when I run into an old friend or Facebook, I can't believe you became a preacher. Uh, that's how radical the change was. That's how supernatural that change is. But when that change happens, now your life is opened up to infinite, I'm talking infinite possibilities in Christ Jesus. This is what we're accessing when we talk about Zoe. It's the life that makes all things possible for those who believe. Divine health, divine protection, uh, life itself, uh, divine provision, Zoe. Everything becomes infinitely possible when we enter into that realm uh, of faith. Listen to this passage. Ephesians chapter 3, verse 20. Uh, I'm reading it out of the Passion Translation. It says, never doubt God's mighty power to work in you and accomplish all this. He will achieve infinitely more than your greatest request. Now you think about your greatest re re request right now. He will achieve infinitely more than your greatest request, your most unbelievable dream, and exceed your wildest imagination. He will outdo them all for His miraculous power constantly energizes you. What's that miraculous power? It's the life of God. It's God life on my insides. It's God life on your uh, insides. So uh, Matthew 19 and 26 tells us all things are possible with God. Matthew 17 and 21 says nothing shall be impossible for us. 
What, where's all this coming from? It's coming from the God life that you received when you believed on the Lord Jesus Christ. Church, I just want to encourage you. Let's go after this God life. Let's create in our own thought processes a greater consciousness of being alive in Christ. That whenever you feel an ache or a pain or whatever it is in your body, that you suddenly go right back to the God life. I've got God on my inside. Pain, you can't stay here. You're going to have to go. See, as you begin to do that, what you're doing is you're now yielding to the inward life of being made alive, Zoe, in God or in Christ. So when you yield to the inward life, you're literally yielding to God. You're saying, God, work through me now. Okay, number three, let's move on. So we talked about uh, connecting to the God life. We talked about accessing the God life. I want to close up uh, this morning uh, in speaking about living the God life, living the God life. So Jesus, to me, becomes the picture, the perfect picture of a man living the God life. So we read in John 5 and 26 that the Father has life in himself and he's granted the same life-giving power, the same Zoe to his Son. So if God gave his Son that Zoe and the Son gives us that Zoe, Jesus then becomes, to me, the perfect picture of a man living the God life. He becomes the perfect picture of a man living the God life. When he encountered storms, he silenced them. When he encountered sickness, he healed. When he encountered death, he raised people from the dead. What are we talking about? Healings, storms being calmed, dead being raised. We're talking about Zoe, the life of God, touching something that's dead and making it alive. When the Zoe, when you believed and it came and touched you, you were spiritually dead, that Zoe touched your dead spirit, man, and you were suddenly recreated. You were made alive in Christ Jesus. I'm talking about us living out of that life. So uh, when we look at Jesus again, John 4.10. I hit these last week as well. Uh, he replied, if you only knew the gift of God, he's talking to the woman at the well, and the gift God has for you and who you're speaking to, you would ask me and I would give you living water. Again, the word that's used there, zoe water. Jesus is saying, if you ask me, I will give you zoe water. I will give you living water. He's talking about a woman who, who's... Uh, been married five times, and the guy she's living with now, uh, they're not even married. Jesus is reading her mail. He's not condemning her. He's leading her to a place where she asks for the living water that if she would drink, she would live forever. He was after removing the spiritual death that was at work on her inside and replacing it with God life. So Jesus calls himself living water. Then in John chapter 6, verse 35, uh, Jesus says, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry. Whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. So I, I am the living water, and I am the bread of life. Those are two necessary things that we have to have in this life to live. One is water, and two, it's bread. So if the water in the natural refreshes and restores and keeps me alive. Jesus is saying, how much more will the Zoe water, the living water, do to an individual who will drink of it? Or we have to have food to live. Jesus is literally saying, I am the bread of life. I am the bread of Zoe. In other words, I will take away that gnawing hunger, that gnawing emptiness in your spirit, man, and replace it with God life. And then third, Jesus calls himself this, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Shorten it down. I am the life. It's like when Moses saying uh, to God, well, who, who do I tell the children of Israel? Who sent me? And God answered back, tell them, I am sent you. So there's a powerhouse in that name, I am. And Jesus declares, I am the life. I am that Zoe. 
No one comes to the Father except uh, through me. So in those three places, he's living water, bread of life, and he literally finishes up saying, I am uh, the life. So he's the perfect picture of a man living a God life. I want to emulate that. I, I want to copy that. I, I want that to be my, my life, to be like him. Uh, in John, Mark chapter 16, Mark 16, verse 17, And these signs will accompany those who believe. In my name they'll cast out demons, they'll speak in new tongues, they'll pick up serpents with their hands, and if they drink any deadly poison, it will not hurt them. They will lay hands on the sick, and they will recover. See, I want to look at Jesus, see Jesus doing that stuff, and I want it to provoke me and cause me to uh, say like uh, Peter, if he can do that, so can I. I don't want to just be a casual observer of these things uh, in this life. You know, we have ample opportunity every day as we're out and about connecting with people. Uh, you know, some people say, well, it's a little difficult during COVID. I've not found that to be true at all. In fact, I found people to be very open and receptive. They like to, to talk. Uh, and there are so many needs out there. But if we would just be quick to pray, not to get into the place of fear. You know, if somebody is, is sick and you, you can observe, well, they need prayer, then don't think about, well, what if God doesn't do something? Start thinking about, I've got God life in me. This God life needs to get out. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do what Jesus did. I'm going to lay hands on right now this individual, and I'm going to believe God to, to heal them. You, are, you step out in faith, and you release the God life. You release that God life. There's ample opportunity uh, to do that. Say, well, what if somebody doesn't get healed? Then push in all the more. You know, not to get under a, a works mentality, but I'm not stopping just because that's, uh, that's my current experience. I want to uh, press on into the God life, that the God life would flow out of me and touch other people. So as we let this God life come into us, it starts to shape, or it should be reshaping, your uh, confession. Now, I, I read this today, and I thought this was interesting. It said, a, a confession is an affirmation of something we believe. A confession is an affirmation of something we believe. So the reason why we confess it is because we believe it. So some of you need to change your confession. You have God life on your inside. So don't call uh, sicknesses your sicknesses. I hear people say, my cold, my diabetes, uh, my heart disease. Well, quit laying hold of it. Change your confession to be, I've got God life in me dealing with this disease right now. Begin to uh, claim for yourself what the Word says you have. I am what the Word of God says I am. If the Word says you're healed, then make that your confession of faith. I am healed. And you speak to that sickness. I command this sickness to leave my body. Light and life have entered me. Sickness, you are darkness, and you need to go right now. Change your confession. Start speaking differently, uh, different words over, over your life. See, as children of God, we need to be dominated by the God life. And that's where I feel like we also speak to Freedom Christian Center. We can grow in this area to where we are more dominated by Zoe in our thoughts, in our conversation, and in our lives. Jesus said it best. Whoever believes shall have eternal life. Meaning God put that life on our insides when we believed in him. You let that life get flowing in here, your marriage will get better, 
Your family situation will change and get better. You'll become more solid in Christ and become such an encourager uh, in the body of Christ. Others will want to drink from your well. They'll see you like living water. They'll want the bread of life that you're handing out to be given to them because it causes them uh, to live. So this God life is constantly creating in us all we have to do is begin to release it to other people by our faith and by our words and by our, by our actions. So, Father, I thank you this morning for your people. Uh, I pray uh, according to your word uh, for their divine safety. Lord, whoever may be afraid in the midst of the storm right now, whether it's uh, the hurricane or whether it's just other things, the storms of life coming against them, I pray that the confession of their mouth would flow from their heart that the God life is flowing through me right now. That you'd cause them to be like Jesus, to sleep in the midst of the storm. I pray, Father, for those who are dealing with uh, sicknesses. Lord, touch their faith. Even as Jesus prayed for Peter's faith, I pray for people's faith right now. Those that hear my word would suddenly experience a burst of faith in their heart and speak to that sickness and command it to leave their bodies. Father, I thank you that you are uh, the miracle worker, that you've given your life to us, that we, like Jesus, can give that life away and see others experience miracles that according to your word, they too may believe. I give you praise, Father. You're the best. We love you. Amen. I want to thank you for joining in this morning. And I do pray that the life of God fills your heart up abundantly, flows out of you in wonderful ways. And by all means, please share the, the praise reports with us. We love getting those. God bless. Take care.